In my previous video, we explored the basics of LLMs, tracing their origins from Alan Turing's Turing test to their pivotal role in modern AI. We discussed high-level LLM architecture and two key concepts, tokenization and embeddings, highlighting their significance in meaningful context-driven text generation. In this video, we'll continue to learn a few more key concepts of LLMs. We'll explore practical applications of embeddings like semantic search, recommendation systems, clustering, and similarity analysis. We will also look into the basics of parameters and their significance in AI. Don't let this technical jargon overwhelm you. If you have watched my previous video, I am confident that by the end of this one, you will have this solid understanding of each of these key AI concepts. So let's get started. Remember how embeddings unlock prediction and generation in the last video? Embeddings are numerical representations of text or data points that capture their meaning and relationships. Think of them as compressed summaries of complex information. While embeddings play a significant role in predicting or generating output in AI models, embeddings alone can be extremely valuable in a lot of applications even without the generative aspect. Let's start with the most common application of embeddings, semantic search. Imagine you search for Paris restaurants. A traditional search engine will most likely scan websites for pages containing the words Paris and restaurants and return a mix of relevant and irrelevant results. The relevant results may consist of restaurant listings, the blog posts about dining in Paris, or reviews of specific restaurants. The irrelevant results might consist of travel articles about visiting Paris, historical information about cuisines, or even a news article about a lost dog named Paris. A semantic search engine understands your intent is to find places to eat in Paris. It considers additional factors such as your location and prioritizes Paris restaurants near you. It also considers your search history if available and suggests restaurants based on previous preferences, example French cuisine or fine dining. It also considers the current time and day and prioritizes restaurants open for your intended meal time be it breakfast or dinner. It finally filters results based on these factors and returns a curated list of Paris restaurants relevant to your needs. Other applications of embeddings are recommendation systems, suggesting similar items based on user preference or product features. Clustering and categorization, that is grouping related data points together based on their semantic characteristics. And similarity analysis, which is a fundamental tool for uncovering hidden patterns facilitating informed decision-making and driving innovation across various sectors, such as comparing documents, code snippets, or even complex structures like images or graphs. Now, I will do a deep dive on this very topic in my future videos, so stay connected and hit the subscribe button if you are liking it so far. So far, we have learned that tokens represent the discrete units of text. They provide the raw material, that is, the individual building blocks of a language and embeddings breathe life into them by assigning numerical representations. This allows the model to understand the nuances of language and the context in which words are used. The magic behind these embeddings lies in parameters. Parameters act as the tuning knobs adjusting the model's internal working to create these meaningful embeddings. By analyzing vast amounts of text data and adjusting these parameters, the model learns to map words to meaningful embeddings capturing the intricate relationship and context within language. Let's understand with a simplified example. Imagine you are writing a dictionary. Each word entry has two parts, definition and knobs. Definition represents the encoded meaning of the word, explaining its concept and usage. This is like the embedding in an LLM. Knobs are adjustable dials that control how the definition is written. Turning these knobs might change the emphasis or specific details including the definition. These knobs are like the parameters in an LLM. For instance, you start with the raw word, apple. The embedding or definition will capture its meaning like a round sweet fruit that grows on trees. The parameters or knobs adjust how this meaning is presented. You can turn the knob to make the definition more formal. Say a deciduous pomer fruit or add details about specific varieties, such as a crisp, juicy fruit with red or green skin, or even inject humor. For example, a delicious snack that keeps doctor away, maybe. Here is a simplified numerical representation. Imagine the embedding in a three-dimensional vector representing the core meaning of apple. 
Say for fruitiness in the dimension 1, it's a value of 0.8. The sweetness value is 0.7 and the roundness value in dimension 3 is 0.6. Now as far as parameters are concerned, we assign weights and biases. So let's say weight 1 controls the emphasis on fruitiness in the definition. Let's give it a value of 1.2. Weight 2 controls the emphasis on sweetness, let's say a value of 0.8 and weight 3 controls the emphasis on roundness, say a value of 0.5. The bias influences the overall tone of the definition, say a value of 0.1. Now these parameters and the embedding interact to generate the definition. The weights amplify the corresponding dimensions in the embedding. So fruitiness is 0.8 times 1.2 which is 0.96. Sweetness is 0.56 and roundness is 0.3. Finally, the bias adds a slight positive slant. So the final values are 0.96 plus 0.1 which is equal to 1.06 for fruitness. 0.56 plus 0.1 equal to 0.66 for sweetness. And 0.4 for roundness. So based on these adjusted values, the LLM might generate a definition for apple like a highly fruity, somewhat sweet and round fruit. The knobs on the dictionary wouldn't be physical dials but rather numerical values within the system. These values would influence how the definition is written. For example, increasing a specific parameter might make the definition more formal, while another parameter might add details about specific varieties. These parameters could be represented as weights and biases. Weights would determine the relative importance of different aspects of the meaning in the final definition. For example, a higher weight for sweetness might lead to a definition that emphasizes the sweetness of the apple more than its roundness. Biases could act as starting points for the definition, influencing the overall tone or style. For example, a positive bias might lead to a more positive and descriptive definition. This is a simplified example with only three dimension and few parameters. Real world embeddings and parameters can be much more complex. My purpose here is to illustrate the concept, not provide an accurate representation of how LLMs actually work. The key point anyways is to remember that the embedding captures the core meaning of the word like the dictionary definition and the parameters fine tune and adjust how this meaning is expressed similar to the adjustable knobs in our dictionary example. As you can imagine, parameters are the backbone of LLMs, allowing them to learn from data and perform complex tasks. Parameters are the internal settings of a neural network that can be adjusted through training to better predict and generate accurate outputs. Another distinction that is commonly used exists between model parameters and prompt parameters. Model parameters can be used at multiple levels in an LLM. During training, the LLM adjusts its parameter based on vast amount of text data. These adjustments help the model learn the relationships between words and capture the underlying structures of language. For example, the model might learn that apple often co-occurs with the words like sweet, fruit, and red and adjusts its parameters accordingly to reflect these relationships in the embeddings of apple. Parameters enables LLM to capture context. This helps the model interpret the meaning of apple differently in sentences like I ate an apple and the price of apples is rising. Parameters also influence how LLMs construct sentences and maintain coherence. During text generation, the model considers various factors including the previously generated words and the overall context. The number of parameters is one indicator of model size, but it's not the only factor. Large models typically have more parameters, but having a high number of parameters doesn't necessarily guarantee a better model. Other factors like model architecture and training data also play a significant role in performance. And finally, using bias parameters, models can be fine-tuned for a specific task. Biases can, however, lead to unfair or discriminatory outputs. For example, ChatGPT's responses on Israel-Palestine conflict. So it is crucial to approach fine-tuning with caution and ensure that the resulting model is unbiased and ethical. Prompt parameters on the other hand refer to the variables or elements that are part of the input given to the model. And yes, we are talking about prompt engineering here. And this takes us to the next major topic of LLMs, prompting. Stay connected.